This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. In most of my lectures, I'm talking about this concept of finding your true self and go with it, flow with it. And I see that people are struggling with that simple mission. And the question is why? Why, if a person now receives that opportunity, permission from heaven, be who you want to be, just go with it, it's okay, he is still lost. Like, why? Why are you lost? Why the person finds it hard to find himself, to recognize his true self, and even if he is free to be who he is, he doesn't know which direction to choose. Why? Why is it happening? And another question is on the verse that is saying Divrei emet nikarim, words of truth, can be recognized. A person can very easily recognize who he really is in that way of asking himself, who am I? And then he will find the answers because when someone is asking you a question, let's say if I'll ask you, do you own your house, the house that you live in, are you renting it or it's your house? You know the, you know the truth about that, an, an, that question, you know the answer. If I'm going to ask you, your name is George, your name is uh, Susanna, you know if your name is Susanna, you know the truth about yourself, you know it. So how come there are certain things that you don't know? Only because you haven't asked yourself. And worse than that is that you ask yourself and you have been answered but you're doubting yourself and that's the problem. People don't know which direction to choose in life not because that they don't know, they know exactly. There are people that are enjoying the sunsets in a very inspiring way, like they need it badly, like for them without seeing the sunsets once in a while, at least once, twice a week, they won't be relaxed and they know it about themselves. You know what you need. Other people, they need to eat. Other people need to feed themselves with only vegetables. Like they know, you know what is building you and what is destroying you. Why you don't let yourself go to that direction? Only because that you're opening yourself to other people's opinion. And you're opening yourself to their opinions, not because that you are such a wise and open person that is thirsty to learn from others. You're doing it because you're doubting yourself and you want other people to confirm with you that what that you're doing is good because alone you cannot choose. You cannot count on yourself. So you need other people to tell you that your decision is right and it's all coming because that you are not giving yourself the credit of being who you are. You're doubting yourself, you're blocking your own path even though that you are recognizing the path. Because if you know that you need the nature, if you know that me for an example, I'll tell you one of my secrets. Simple thing. When I was 16 years old, 15 years old, I was smoking weed and I was smoking a lot of weed when I was 15 years old. It was the beginning of me smoking weed and I was smoking tons of weed. When I was 18, it was the peak and I was smoking and smoking and smoking and it opened my mind in ways that if I wouldn't smoke when I was 15, 16, 17, 18, I wouldn't be who I am today because it really back then opened my mind to be aware to myself, to find myself in ways that I wouldn't experience if I wouldn't smoke back then. Today, if I'm going to smoke, it won't heal me. It won't help me. Today, I am mature enough to know if something is building me and helping me or destroying me. So I know that I can choose. The free choice is, is, is in my hand. But now to go and to claim that to smoke weed is wrong because that today it's damaging me if I'm going to do it, 
it will it will be a crime against weed. Why? Because I know that there are certain people or certain conditions that weed can help, weed can heal, can open their mind, can heal them physically. It it, it is a medicine. It can help, but. In the same time, there are different people that when they're smoking, they're losing their happiness and they're falling to anxieties, to depressions. They're losing their self-esteem and their self-confidence. So to those people, the same weed will be poison. You need to check yourself when you smoke or when you are investigating in your mind what happened to you when you smoked five years ago, seven years ago. And to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, was I smoking because that it helped me, really it gave me something, or that I was just denying and found a way to run away from commitments and it felt like just relaxing and I, maybe it was also good back then, but maybe it's not what that I need today. The only reason why you're not dealing with your thoughts is because that you're scared to deal with them. Many people, for an example, they want to become religious. They want to keep Shabbat, to be observant. They want to eat kosher. They want to, to be pure, to go to the mikveh. They want amazing things. Great. Now, there is one question. Why are you doing it? Because you found true thing in it and you have an inner passion to grow spiritually and you know that it's the right path or that you just don't have the power to deal with your reality. And here's a nice outlet. I can escape from my life. Over there, no one will reach out to me anymore. I won't have to face my parents. I won't see my friends anymore. Sounds like heaven. I'm going for that. What's the reason? What's your motive? What's your real reason to take decisions in life? We need to understand that we are taking decisions. And if we're taking decisions based on our fears, based on the fact that we are not looking for the truth, based on the fact that we are running away from commitment, from dealing with our trauma, from our emotional pain, so even if we're going to choose to make Aliyah and to move to the Holy Land and to buy property in the old city in front of the Western Wall, it won't build you. You're going to be stuck over there in front of that fantastic view with all your fears and panic and pressure and you're going to hate yourself and going to keep on blaming yourself and you won't have one moment of comfort. Jerusalem won't speak to you. But if you will choose the truth, so even the lowest level of truth of admitting in front of yourself, I'm a failure, I disappointed myself, I destroyed my potential with my bare hands, will be comforting, will be a healing news for you, and it will give you strength and power, because you chose the truth, and you connected yourself to your true self. To keep on doubting yourself and destroying your self-esteem, and to choose based on your fears, to go and consult with people and to follow other people's advice, because you're too scared to be who you are, will never going to bring you to, your, to, to fulfill your, your, your destiny, to achieve to your goals, to become that person that you feel that you can become in your potential. You won't achieve it. Because really to achieve your potential will be only as a result of a true inner search of, of the truth. And the truth is a never-ending sea of knowledge. The truth is a journey. The truth is not the Bible is the truth and that's it. Because a lousy person can take the same Bible and to misinterpret it and to twist the message in such a cruel way that he will destroy thousands of people while using verses for that cause. And an angel will interpret the, the verses in a wonderful and pleasant way that only will heal people. So even the Bible, that no one is doubting the Bible, cannot heal you. Because the intention of your heart is needed to connect yourself to the Bible from a good direction, with a good purpose, with a good cause. So there is no right or wrong directions in life. To be religious or not, 
to live in Israel or in the U.S., to be close to your parents or not, to get married or not, to smoke weed or not, to go to learn in college or not. To, all those questions, there is no right and wrong answers. What did you need to ask yourself is, how am I choosing? What is bringing me now to that intersection? Why am I thinking of getting married? Because I found my soulmate and I know it and it's time and I'm happy or that I'm terrified to stay alone and what am I going to do if I'm going to lose my shiduch, my soulmate and what's going to happen to me if I'm not going to catch the train and I'm already 38 and 42 is on the way and like that's not a good reason. Maybe if you are standing in that place you can also say to yourself you know what I'm realizing that I'm terrified and that fear is freezing me and I'm not able to function and I need to take a decision and I think that based on the fact that I'm aware to myself that I'm too terrified even though that I'm still doubting and I'm not sure that he's the right one for me yet but I do think that it will be the right decision you can get married with that thought even if it's not ideal even if it's not perfect just the fact that you put your mind into that decision brings waves of healing into that decision. And pure spirit will hover and will fix it and will clear the path for you to keep on growing. Even if your intentions are not the purest, if you will check, you will see that they are, that they were. Because the intention of your heart is the reason why you work is the reason why you put effort. When you want to do good, it's enough. Based on that, you can take any decision in the world, even if all the world will stand against you and will argue with you. If your intention is pure, and you checked it, and you checked yourself, what is the reason that I want to choose? You will realize that that is the divine will of heaven. Because the Creator is good, and He's looking for good. And for us to achieve the truth is a complex mission. Why? Because every person is located in a different location. And the truth is the center, is the core of creation. We need to look for one truth. There is one truth in the middle of life. That's the source of life, of creation. And we all need to find it from different places. So when I'm calling you and asking you, hey, if I'm standing here and I'm looking for the truth, so should I take a right or left? You cannot provide an answer to me because from your location, it's left. And from my location to the same direction is to the right. I cannot follow your guidings even if you're saying the truth because we are located in different places. We cannot learn from each other if to choose right or left. What we can learn from each other, to listen to our hearts. If I'm going to ask you what should I do right now, and you will tell me you should listen to the voice of your soul, you should focus and ask yourself what's the truth. In my position, what is the next step if I will listen to that advice, I will succeed. Because the Creator is the God of truth. He is the truth of creation. And when He created the world and gave all the people different amounts of wisdom and different kinds of talents and of abilities, and He gave to every individual a certain power, it was based on His divine understanding that our missions will be different as well. Me and you should not do the same thing. We should not practice the same work for heaven. Because we are different people with different missions. And even though that we are related in many ways and we have a lot in common, our intentions will always be different because our hearts are different. 
And we, every individual, must connect himself to his real heart, to his real inner channel, that only through that channel he is receiving inner divine information from heaven. Because the Creator is guiding you from within. He's opening your eyes with a certain passion to certain colors, to certain kinds of books, to certain voices, certain sounds, certain smells that are pulling you in life and bringing you from one destiny to the next. And one is following his passion to pink and to purple, and the other one is following his desire to green and to blue, and everyone are going after their noses, and their noses are bringing them to the right spot when they're listening to their inner voice. But when you're ignoring yourself, and you're denying your being, and you're doubting your true self, and you're saying, hey, no, my passion to green is crazy, because everyone are after brown, everyone are after pink, so I must be wrong, and you know what, I'm going to be pink, I'm going to be brown, and you start changing yourself, you're losing your mind, you're losing yourself, and you try to be someone else, but it's the only thing in the world that a person cannot do. To be someone else. It's a joke. It's hilarious. And that's the worst sickness of all of our generation. That people are trying to imitate others. And to learn from others. And to become like others. And to uh, like all the world is sick with that. And it's all coming because of low self-esteem. And destroyed character that we cannot count on ourselves anymore. And we're too scared to be who we really are. When to be who we are is our only option. Because you are only who you are and you cannot change it. There is nothing in the world that can make you someone else. Even all the plastic surgeries that you're going to make just going to show your face in a different way, but you're going to stay who you are. You're going to cut part of your nose, you're going to cut your cheeks, your, your, your shoulders, your, your hips. What? You're going to cut yourself to pieces. But it's going to be you. Cut into pieces. It won't change you. Yourself will always going to be yourself. If you're going to elevate your spirit, if you're going to grow spiritually, if you're emotionally going to develop, it's amazing, but it's also going to be you just elevated. It will also always going to be you. I remember in the beginning of my tshuva when I became religious, so my father looked at me once and he told me, when I'm talking to you, I see only tzitzit in front of my eyes. So I told him, it's because you're looking at the tzitzit. Look at me and you're going to see your son. I'm standing here in front of you. I'm not a different person. You choose to look at my tzitzit. Oh, tzitzit, tzitzit, tzitzit. And you lose your mind because of my tzitzit. Stop looking at my tzitzit. Look at my eyes. I'm with you. Like, talk to me. What's the problem? Let's talk. When you choose not to look at your own eyes and you choose to judge yourself based on how much money you make, how many friends you have, connections, what you're following on Facebook, I don't know, like stupid things, you lose yourself. You lose your identity. And that's the, 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 the trap of the evil inclination. The Yetzirah. He wants you to lose yourself. He wants you to lose your inner connection to the Creator that already treasured inside of you an inner channel, an inner pipe, that through it you are connected. As long as you're alive, you are connected to the source of life. It means that the life itself, the, the, the source of life, Hashem, Heaven, the Creator, Reviving you, gives you life, gives his spirit into you because he is the source of life. If you're alive, it means that Hashem is inside of you. It means that the Creator lives inside of you. When Hashem leaves the body, when the soul li leaves the body, the body is dead. That's it. It's, it's a body. There is no soul over there. The soul is portion of heaven. Means that it's a godly soul. Means that it's particle of heaven. It's an portion of the Creator Himself. It's a beam of His light that is installed inside of your body. That it's only a holy chariot. It's a vehicle that is carrying your godly soul. Your portion of heaven. So now who you are? You are who you are. When they asked Hashem, who are you? Hashem said, 
I am who that I am. That was his answer. I am who I am. Who are you? I am who that I am. Who are you? You are who you are. That's who you are. And who is Hashem? Hashem is who that Hashem is. Now you want to find Hashem? Okay, fine, start. How are you going to find Him? Start finding yourself. Find your connection to the... Find your keyboard. You want to work on your computer? You want to connect yourself to, to, to online? You want to, you want to be connected? Okay, so find your keyboard. Who are you? What gives you life? Now, those are simple questions that we're afraid to ask. That after we asking, that after we ask and we find the answer, we are doubting the answers that we received. And we're canceling and disqualifying those answers and we're destroying our decisions and we're following different routes, different ways. And we're dropping our inner answers and the truth that we already found and dropping it because of our low self-esteem. Instead of working days and nights only to find your true nature, ask yourself, what do you like? An answer, I like hearing jazz, I like music, I like mm, mm, ve vegetables, I like the sea, I like swimming, I like running. Ask yourself. Now, okay, so you're an athlete, you like sports, you like the, the, the smells of, of, of incense, how you say incense? You like that, you like, you like going hiking, whatever. You found you like wearing jeans, you like short sleeves, long sleeves, you feel heat in the summer, you don't like bright colors, colorful. Everyone, find yourself. Now, make a list of your character, of who you are. Now, what's your problem with that list? That you disrespect that list, that you don't appreciate your qualities, your nature. When you look and you find yourself, you hate what did you see. That's your problem. Your problem is not to find who you are. Your problem is to believe that who that you found is precious, is important, is godly, is real. Why? Because that your self-esteem been destroyed for years on years by society by your parents, by your siblings, by your friends, by your teachers, by people that cheated on you and betrayed you and insulted you and took advantage of you and abused you and hurt you in so many ways and you were fragile and weak and you were not able to deal with those destructions and they destroyed you. So now, as a result of the war that took place in your life, you're doubting yourself. So it's okay. It's okay. If you would think that your best friend is so destroyed that he cannot appreciate himself anymore, you would understand him. You would go to him and you would hug him and you would tell him, I understand you. But now it's time to work on yourself. Because when I look at you, I see a holy person. I see a good person. I see that you are still kind. I see that there is a positive light inside of you. Look, you are gifted. You see, you are talented. You succeeded in that. You know that thing that you achieved? Not many people achieved that thing. And you would go with him from one point to the next. And you would remove the ashes and the dust of sadness and depression from his eyes and you would help him to recognize the good points inside of him. Right? Right. So do that favor with yourself. Put yourself in front of the mirror and check yourself and find the qualities of your spirit, your achievements. The qualities that you do have inside of you, the treasures that have been treasured inside of you. And even if it's something so weird that only you in the world know how many stars there are in the sky, why the, the North Star is moving in that direction and not that, there is something in it that you don't appreciate. But you know what? This is your connection to God. Because the Creator, He Himself, 
he thought that it is important to set the North Star to move in that direction. And there is a cause and a purpose for that. Even if the wide world cannot understand and appreciate it, the fact that you can means that you are unique means that you recognize something that is hidden from the eyes of the world. It doesn't mean that you're crazy. You know, I met one of my students and she told me that she's collecting stones while she's walking on the way she lives in the desert and she collects stones all the time. And in a certain moment, after she told me all those things and I am also like crazy and I also like stones and for an example, um, I'm carrying stones with me while I'm walking, so like, uh, sorry, that's like, it's part of my journey. I'm also a stone collector. I was stoned when I was 15, and now I'm collecting stones, and I'm helping stoners, like, you know, it's part of my mission. Oh, part of my mission. Sorry. Part of the mission. Now, when she told me that, so we were just like talking. Okay, she's collecting stones and whatever, and show me some of the stones that she's collecting. Great, amazing thing. But then we were talking about some verses, and then she said, you know, Yoshua, that he was the main student of Moses, and he was the one that took Am Israel into the Holy Land of Israel. And he said to his people back then, 3,000 years ago, those stones... Those stones will be the witnesses. They are my witnesses that I am keeping the Torah and that I... Suddenly stones receives a different meaning when their name is carved in the verses in the Bible. Suddenly stones can talk. Suddenly stones can witness. Suddenly stones can witness and to be eternal witnesses forever that they can become even greater than people in certain aspects. They have their qualities and they're only stones. You don't understand the power of stones and you don't understand the power of that person that is walking and collecting stones in the desert, even if he is not aware to all the qualities and the wisdom that is behind the way of creation of nature and stones and what. You don't need to know that the Creator will use you for that cause. If you like to paint with watercolors, if you like to paint with oil colors, there is a reason for that. The Creator, He knows exactly why He put a certain passion in your heart and not a different. Why you live in LA and He lives in Arizona. Why He lives in, in Texas and that guy lives in, 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 in Elizabethtown, Tennessee. You cannot understand why he lives over there and why she lives there. You cannot understand it. But if you will ask her, she will tell you, all my friends are here, my family, I have a business, I like that park. They have sparks over there and they appreciate those sparks. They're connected to those sparks. So let yourself be connected to those sparks that you are connected to. Give yourself a credit to recognize that you are also part of that fantastic puzzle of the Creator and His creation. You are representing the light that is treasured inside of you. And without you, the Creator wouldn't have that tool that it's you to represent Himself in the way that you do. Because no one can do what that you can do. Your problem is that you don't appreciate yourself. You don't appreciate yourself for sitting for a couple of hours with that crazy person yesterday night and sitting with him in the 5,000th time in your life, but still sitting with him until the middle of the night when he's half drunk and you are lost completely and you're broke and you have thousands of worries, but you still gave your two hours yesterday again after giving those two hours to the days ago again and two weeks ago again and again and again but you don't appreciate yourself on spending those two hours but you know who appreciate it his father you know who is his father in heaven his father in heaven is the one that sent that soul to that mission and now one of his children is so lost and you're the only one that sat with him for two hours. No one else cares about him except of you. Even his parents, they don't care about him except of you. 
and you are now hating yourself and wasting your time and you don't appreciate yourself on how precious was that act of grace of you sitting with him for another couple of hours giving him some good advice hugging him making a cup of tea for him inviting him to your house or sitting with him in the park till the middle of the night you don't appreciate it because you still give the power to people that use that power to destroy you to climb and to go above you and to, sh to push you down and to grow on your account and you give them the credit and the permission to criticize you and to break your self-esteem and to humiliate you and to shame you only because that you don't go with your inner flame of being who you really are and you give them the authority to abuse you and to use you and to humiliate you for no reason because no one in this world have the permission to live on your account, to destroy your happiness, to abuse you, to shame you, because you're not Jewish, because you're not wise enough, because you're not a Hasidic, because I don't know what, <clears throat> because you're not, I don't know what, in their twisted eyes. They have twisted eyes. You know why they have twisted eyes? Because they're not working on their eyes. Because they let themselves be who they are without caring about other people around them. But when we are talking about let yourself be who you are, we're talking about let the inner light of your goodness shine. Of allowing yourself to love again or to be loved, to care, to fight for justice, to do good in the world. Not to abuse, not to live on the accounts of other people. What's the source of evil? Why people are evil? Why people can be so cruel and bad? Only because that those people have been hurt and they don't know how to deal with that pain. And because that they are not even in the direction of working on it, so they're putting it all on someone else. So now the fact that he suffered, is it a good reason enough for you to suffer because of him? The answer is clearly no. You don't need to suffer because that he suffered. Now, if he wants to work with you together on fixing yourselves, on building your relationship, of communicating, respecting each other more, talking, building, so great. It's worth it to suffer and to sacrifice for that noble cause of building something great together. We're going to melt ourselves into that melting pot to work. The effort is needed and required and blessed. We're happy to work and to sweat for a good cause. But if it's just from one side destroying and humiliating and insulting and shaming and all the time criticizing and, and being negative and, and, and judgmental, for what? What's the purpose? What's the use? To kill me? So, so kill me and let's get over it. Let's finish. Let's shoot me one time and, and set me free. For years to destroy and to kill and to humiliate, that's not the relationship. That's not something that's worth it to, to sacrifice for. If it's not coming from a good cause, don't let it happen into your life. Don't let it in. Because what it is it, it's causing, it's to your self-esteem to go lost. That you will lose your identity. That you will feel, hey, I'm a coward. Hey, I'm a failure. I'm a low life, I don't have no future, I won't make it, uh, I'm, I'm ignorant. Like all those negative words that have been said about you will be attached to you. And you will think that that's who you are. But you're not. Because like we said before, if you will stand in front of your own mirror and going to start like checking who am I really? What do I really like? You will see that you like good things. What are my real inner will? my inner desires, you will find out that you are carrying a Holy Spirit, a Holy Soul inside of yourself. And you will recognize many qualities inside of yourself. And for that, sometimes a person should uproot himself from his original environment and to go, to go somewhere else and to save his life by that. To become a refugee from the exile and to look for a new start, for a new home, even in a foreign land. 
even in a foreign environment, in an environment that will respect you, that will allow you to grow and to become who you really are. Now again, our war against our evil inclination is only the war against our own fears. Because the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, cannot touch your life. The fact that you lost money, the fact that you lost that friend, the fact that you lost that house, it's not the act of the Yetzirah, of the evil inclination. Your doubts after this situation are the work of the evil inclination. The negative thoughts in your mind are the spirit of the evil inclination. So every time that negative thoughts are attacking you and your character, your purpose in life and your dream and your desire, you should not follow those negative thoughts. They are your enemy. When in your thoughts you realize, oh, I need to be sad now. I need to go down now. I'm hating myself right now. I need to blame myself. How could I do that? And you become... Ne That's the time to realize that someone made a joke on you. That someone fooled you. That you failed now in the test. And the evil inclination is able to contaminate your brain with negative thoughts and negative and dark feelings. So what you should do, you should break those chains and set yourself free and go and search for your good points inside of yourself and find who you really are in the nature of your creation and to come back to your true self means go to the park, means take your flute and start playing, means put a song that you like on YouTube or whatever you like doing and heal yourself. Come back to your true self. If it's learning from the Bible, learn from the Bible. If it's going to learn the page of Gemara, go learn Gemara. If it's to go to the mikveh, go to the beach. Go to breathe, go to eat bodhidut. Whatever will bring you to your true self means to be positive. To come back to the true nature of your creation. To be connected to the light of your spirit. To come back to your qualities. To find power how to design your life in the path that you dream of. That you believe that you should walk in. That is to be who the Creator made you to be. To believe in yourself, it's to drop all the junk and to go to find your true self. That's the real way of how to be servants of the Creator. Not to deny your nature, just to uncover your true potential. That the Creator made you fantastic. I'm going to ask you, if there is a small child, a Russian child, that he has crazy ability and talent with violin. A Chinese child that when he's holding a guitar, he's three years old, he can play the guitar in a way that no one can understand in the world how the hell he's doing that with that guitar. How does it happen? She with the violin. That five years old kid dancing ballet in a crazy way, like she's flying. She's, she's not connected to the ground. She's hovering above the stage, like what in the world I just saw, I'm asking you, is that a talent that we should disqualify? It, where, where is it written in the Torah that you should play the guitar? Violin, dancing, ballet? I'm going to ask you. Do you think that the Creator, when He put a certain flavor, taste, in an orange, and a different one in a banana, it was for no reason? Different qualities, different flavors, different smells, different colors, shapes. Was it for a purpose? Yes. So you think that when he planted that talent in that five years old kid, was it for no reason at all? Maybe we need to learn what to do with that blessing. Maybe we need to understand what we can do, how we can elevate that amazing talent, but to ignore it, to erase it, to disqualify it, it's a sin. It's a violation of the beauty of the Creator that He Himself put His power into that girl because she's dancing in a godly way. She's not dancing because her teacher was so amazing. She's dancing because there is a certain spirit inside of her that is flying on stage right now. 
And if you know how to make money, and if you know how to remember numbers, and if you have the ability to hold a camera and to make pictures and to send them an Instagram, I don't know what. You've been blessed in a certain way that no one else did, that no one else is like you. You, by hiding it and denying it and ignoring it, you're blocking the light of heaven that's been given to you to share. Maybe you still don't know how to use it. Maybe you need to learn how to use your talents in a useful way. Not to make pictures of things that will make people doubt their life or question their relationship with their wives or whatever. Maybe you should take your talent to a healthy place. Great, do that. But don't erase the nature of your creation. Don't disqualify who that the Creator made you to be because He knows exactly who you should be and what you should do in life. And one person, the Creator wants him to be Colombian. And one person, Hashem wants him to be Mexican. And one person, Hashem wants him to be Jewish. And one person, Hashem wants him to be Russian. And one, Hashem wants him to be born in Saudi Arabia. Why? Hashem knows why. But if you're born in Saudi Arabia, you need to ask yourself, okay, so now I'm here, Saudi Arabia. What is the mission of my life? What should I do now with my reality? Now I am Native American in America of 2018. Okay, what am I supposed to do with this reality? What's the truth about my journey? Who am I in the big picture? What is my mission? I can talk to them. Oh, and I like that person, and I understand their thoughts, and I have a certain attraction to that subject and to those aspects, and I'm very gifted and blessed. I have good hands. I can do this. I can do that. Okay, that's you. Now, what's your problem with it? That you look at other people, and they're making millions and they driving Mercedes, and they have five houses on the beach, not only one like yours. That's your problem. That you look with your eyes instead of looking with your heart. With your physical eyes instead of using your mind. Listening to opinions of people instead of reconnecting yourself to the root of your soul and understanding who you are in the nature of your creation. Instead of comparing yourself to other people, impossible mission, because you will never be them and they will never be you. Connect yourself to your true you, to your true self, and let it shine. To recognize who you are, it's not a problem. That's not your problem. To know that you like chocolate bars in the middle of the night, you know it. <laughs> now, to understand that there is something good in it, that's your problem. You don't understand that the Creator is great enough to make you do something great in the middle of the night, entering quietly to the kitchen, smoking, <laughs> taking, eating. There is something great in it. You know why? And what's the evidence for that? If you would hear that Daria Kadosh had that habit, you would say, oh, look. Tikkun Chatzot, in the middle of the night, Daria Kadosh, he was taking a bite of something, oh, he had his intentions. No problem, he had his intentions. Now I'm asking you, don't you have your intentions? What can be your intentions in the middle of the night when you're eight eating your chocolate bar? In the middle of the night, yes, you, yourself, what's your intentions? Aren't you trying to make yourself a little bit happier? Aren't you trying to relax yourself in a way? So what is so horrible in that? I'm asking you. What's so wrong with trying to be happy even if your happiness is so simple like a chocolate bar in the middle of the night? Why to hate yourself because the chocolate helps you? You know why chocolate helps you? Not because you're crazy or fat or disgust. Not that's not the reason. The reason the chocolate helps you is that when you were a two years old child and your mother she didn't know how to deal with you when you were screaming, she would shove chocolate to your mouth. That's the only reason why chocolate is healing you because that was your solution when you were two. 
when you were three, when you were seven, and when you were 11 years old, you realize that that's a solution because your mother at midnight, she's going and taking a chocolate bar. That's why you're stuck with that habit. Not because you're a sinner, not because you're pathetic, not because you're hopeless, not because you are I don't know what. Only because that you are stuck in certain patterns. And if you don't like them, you can work on them and heal yourself. But with criticism and self-hatred, you will never going to heal yourself. You're just going to kill yourself. Blaming yourself on things that you haven't started, that you haven't caused to yourself. You haven't created yourself and you haven't created society around you. You haven't created your parents and you haven't created your friends when you were 15 and they taught you how to smoke from a bunk. You never created that reality. The Creator created that reality. Now you have questions of, on Him of why? Why was I supposed to go through that path? Why did I have to go through those traumas, through those people, those experiences? Okay, go ask. If you will ask from a truthful place, from an honest place, you will receive answers. And those answers will be amazing. Look at me right now. I am using all of my filthy background as tools to reach out to you guys today. I'm talking to you in a language that is familiar to you only because of my background. Only because I was smoking and I saw movies. That's how I have my English. Our mother tongue is Hebrew. I never spoke English in my house. I learned it only from Star Wars and from all the Westerns that we saw and from watching videos on Yom Kippur in the middle of the night when we were children. That's the truth. Poor, sad truth? I don't know. The result today is fantastic. Today I can talk to thousands of people that are going to relate to my life story only because the, the Creator knew that I had that power to recover to climb back up from that darkness, even though that he crushed me so badly with tattoos, three, with piercings, with many life experiences, with bikes, with jeeps, with violating Shabbatot, with eating lobsters, with doing whatever. He destroyed me. But in the end, after all that washing machine, he brought me to a place in life that I will be mature enough aware enough, healthy in my mind enough to use all of my life experience to help other people with it and not to be scared from it. No matter what you're going to tell me about yourself, how horrible you are, what did you have done, I don't have a clue. I'm telling you, it's a joke. I can eat you like chips. It's nothing. It's a joke. It's your evil inclination makes your problem, so to speak, looks impossible to solve in your eyes for you to give up, for you to fall to despair. That's the only thing here. Even if you cheated, even if you lied, even if you betrayed, even if you killed someone, so now every person that killed someone, now we need to execute him? Because, no, you killed someone, sorry. No. The answer is no. That person that killed someone and sat 20 years in prison for that, he knows the taste of bitterness of how it feels to kill a poor soul on spending time in prison in the company of people that are criminals between violent people. If he will take his life journey seriously, he will be able to go back to the neighborhood and to save the young kids that are playing with guns like it's, it's nothing and he will help them to understand how horrible it is to take a life of a person. And he, because of his horrible life experience of shooting someone in the back in the middle of the street, he will save lives of hundreds by taking guns from ten people. And he can save hundreds of lives. And if he will ask heaven and what about that guy that he killed? From heaven they will answer to you that he was supposed to die. And that you cannot understand the way that the Creator works because he works in mysterious ways. And not everything is so simple and clear. Things are very deep and going very far. 
And the Creator, He's the only one that knows everything about everything. And you don't need to know. You need to believe. You need to believe, first of all, in yourself. That if the Creator made you in a certain way, it's for a cause. And it's for a purpose. With your colors, with your accent, with people that are surrounding you, with your challenges, with your weaknesses, with your lackings, with your gigantic obstacles that you're facing that you don't know how to deal with. It's for a purpose. There's a cause for that. And if you will just aim your heart to ask, what is the truth? What is my next step? I want to make one step today. You will always find it. Because words of truth can be recognized. If you will ask what's the truth, you will know it. Things that you still don't know is only because you haven't asked yourself all the way what's the right answer about that. You are too scared to deal and confront your fears on those aspects. Don't be scared from your fears. Your fears can control you only when you're afraid of them. Only when you run away from them, they can terrify you, terrorize you, attack you. When you're running away, don't run away. Let it wash you. Let it cleanse you and purify you. Your lackings, your shames, deal with it. So what? I messed up. Go admit. Make a phone call to your best friend. Tell him, I cheated on you. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Ask yourself first, what's the purpose of you calling him? Will it heal? Will it help? Or that you're just trying to clean yourself and put all your filth on him? Don't do that. Ask yourself, what's the right thing to do? And even if it's going to hurt, it's going to heal you. And go and search for the potions of your life. Go and find the next step of your life and build yourself one brick after the next, one stone after the next. And you will see with time that you achieved amazing things, that you built fantastic palaces with your small effort, your daily effort of being honest, of being sincere, of being truthful, of being loyal, of being who you are. You don't need to change. You just need to let your light shine. The goodness that is treasured inside of you, just let it shine. And the world will enjoy the light that has been treasured inside of you. The light of heaven that has been given to you and only to you and to no one else. And when you will be aware to it and you will use it, by that you will water the world with the light of your soul. You will share the godly light that has been given to you for that cause. To share. To be a lighthouse to the nations. To the wide world. To uplift everyone. To help everyone sing and recognize the beauty of their creation. Their true colors. The colors of God. Colors of heaven. That are treasured inside of each and every one of us. Thank you very much for coming. I wouldn't be able to speak if you wouldn't come. You know that, right? So thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. The Muna Project is a non-profit organization. You are more than welcome to help us to support our activities. We're crossing the country now. Oh, we saw so many states. We visit in, like, I think that, uh, like, most of Americans haven't seen what that we saw in the last two years, uh, all their lives. Like, we've been all over the place, and we are keep on marching. So help us and support us. You can enjoy hundreds and, like, more than 1,000 videos of similar lectures um, to that one that you heard tonight. And we have books and children books and CDs and a lot of good information. And um, we have everything here. And we're thanking our amazing hosts that host us and made this event possible. And thank you again, everyone, for coming. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. 
for more, please visit amuna.com.